<laughs> and now, from Seoul, Korea, the world's least known great city, it's the KTLIT.com and 10 Magazine Book Club, Korean Literature Podcast. We get literature confused in two different languages with your hosts, Barry Welsh and Charles Montgomery. Welcome to the second podcast that we have no idea what we called uh-huh. the last time that Barry suggests we call the Barry and Charles Magnificent Korean <laughs> Literature Podcast. The big time Korean big, book podcast. Big time Korean yeah. book podcast. So for the purposes of this particular show, that's what we're going to call it. And we're going to do a couple of things today. Um, keep it short as usual. Don't want to bore you. We're going to talk about a collection of Korean short literature that we suggest you collect mm-hmm. if you're interested in Korean literature. And we are going to talk about The Hen Who Dreamed She Could yes. Fly by Hwang yeah. Sung-mi. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, we should also mention, we have a semi-unofficial sponsor, Barry. You want to talk about Oh, Barry's right. drinking his tea and I'm drinking my delicious Americano uh-huh. from... So this is from uh, Funny Fish. And Funny Fish is a company, an art company based in Insadong. In actually a famous location in Insadong called the Samji Gil. Am I saying that right? Samji Gil. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. yeah. They're on the second floor of the Samji Gil. They're called Funny Fish, and they make all sorts of different products that are inspired by uh, Korean poetry and Korean artworks. So thanks to Funny Fish for the mugs, and thanks to Funny Fish for also donating some prizes to the last book club meeting. Yeah, and absolutely. I think for the, for the next book club meeting. So we're too. proud. We have our first unofficial sponsor. Yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, let's just move directly into it while you're having a sip. The first thing we're talking yeah. about is, I don't know if you can see it here, the Ji Moon Dong collection of 25 books that collect uh, and Barry is holding some that collect either single short stories or a collection of short stories by Korean authors of note. And it's not necessarily the first, everything else being equal, it would not necessarily be the first collection I suggest you start with. Mm. But everything else is not equal. These books are starting to disappear, yeah. particularly overseas. Shockingly, an author that we both love, Kim Yun Ha, his Photoshop Murder. This book is currently being sold on Amazon for $2,300. <laughs> so, if you want to read these books, you need to purchase these books. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's start with the Photoshop Murder, because I think we both really liked that. Yes, fantastic. So, we mentioned him last time, uh, Kim Young ha uh, as maybe one of the first entry points to modern Korean literature. First really accessible entry point yeah, for mm-hmm. foreigners. And actually I've read, he's got three novels in translation, so I Have the Right to Destroy Myself, Your Republic is Calling You, and most recently Black Flower, translated by Charles Le Chure, right, and all well worth picking up. But I think the two stories that are included in this collection are actually the two most purely enjoyable um, stories that I think Kim Young has done. Just so much fun to read, very interesting elements of humour as well, and just very interesting, even in terms of just their literary value as well. I and think. this is an interesting thing because I would mention uh, two other stories that Barry hasn't read yet. Mm. One is in uh, the new collection, Land of Exile, and it's called The Pager. And the other is called The Lizard, and I'm not sure precisely, I don't remember where that was published. Kim Yung ha just has a real way with short stories. He just has a real yeah. way of figuring out what his point is in a short story and nailing it down. So this is a good recommendation, not just in terms of the collection, but a recommendation. If you're interested in, in becoming interested in Korean fiction at all, starting with Photoshop Murder is a good way to do it. A terrible way to do it is to purchase Photoshop Murder online for $2,300. If you're interested, contact us at the URL down here, www.ktlit.com and or www.soulabc.com and we will hook you up with a cheaper yeah, version. We could probably send these to people, right? We should. I, yeah. We'll give them to you for 1000 <laughs> So, well, moving on, then there was another one that I think we both really agreed on that we really okay, both yeah, really uh-huh. enjoyed, and that was that is uh, Deep Blue Night. Yeah, Deep Blue Night, Che In Ho, who sadly passed away last year. I think. Yes, uh, he yeah, actually, uh-huh. if you watched our first show, you saw me pour out a half a glass of soju. That uh-huh. was, in fact, and I also I had brought the same book. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh, that was, uh-huh. in fact, for Cho, uh, Ch- Ch- Choi In Ho. Yeah. And, um, 
This is a really interesting story because it's mm. an, very unusual in a sense. It's very Korean. It's about two, two Koreans passing through a Korea town and their relationship to Korea, but they're in California. Very broadly speaking, it's a road trip story. Yeah, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, just such a pleasure to read again. Just a very, very enjoyable story to read. And an excellent sort of examination of friendship. These two guys who are sort of self imposed exiles from their homeland and the experiences they have and the feelings they have about being displaced and being somewhere else. And you learn why they're there and what's motivated them to be there. And uh, just a very interesting story about their relationship and how they feel about their, their home and, and their family back home. And also semi-autobiographical uh, and oh, right. a yeah, slice yeah. of a life at a particular time in the 70s and 80s in which certain kinds of behavior were absolutely prohibited in mm -hmm. Korea and resulted in your being kicked overseas. The only yeah, other yeah. book I could compare it to is probably Kim min Suk's The Long Road, which we'll probably talk about at some other point. I should say before we pass along on that, if you do like him, he also wrote the short story The Boozer, and I have written down where The Boozer is. Oh yeah, free online somewhere. Free mm -hmm. online somewhere. Also, I believe, available in the Land of Exile, mm -hmm. this excellent collection, the Good Starter collection. Uh, uh, Chae Ho also wrote Tower of Ants, a very modern, very scary story of a man in a battle with an ant colony, and things, let's just say, don't necessarily turn out well. And he also wrote a book called Another Man's Room in uh, the Modern Co Korean Fiction and Anthology. It was a book, so, book I was, a story I wasn't that keen on, mm. so I wouldn't particularly write okay. that down. But a very popular guy in Korea, right? Yes, very beloved popular. in yes. Korea. Yeah. Uh -huh. And in fact, if you go to, I think, it may be near E-Day, there's mm. a street. Uh, that would be Iwa Women's University. There's a street in which they have the handprints of famous authors. That oh, really? Included. Yes. I didn't know that. It used to be his drinking haunts. Yeah. It used oh. to be a famous place for authors. <laughs> right. Korea, so. Yeah, well, certainly you get the sense that he, he liked to drink. Yeah. From this, right? <laughs> I think it's fair to say that this... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's another book from this collection called uh, Dark Remembrance that we'll talk about some other night uh, that's like that, some okay. other days like that. And we should mention, actually, there's a film adaptation of uh, Deep Blue Night and I didn't get, haven't had a chance to watch it yet, uh, but the screenplay was adapted by Che In Ho as well. However, I believe that it's significantly different in some aspects. There's an extra character, there's a female character, and there's more of a romance angle, I think. Yeah, I began to watch it, and it diverged so badly from that you just the story that I oh, could okay. not. Could but still, he he wrote the screenplay, so I still think there might be some some interest in that. Yeah. Okay, so there's also a wide range of other things in this collection. As we said, 25 volumes. So there's this one story that uh, seems to divide us. Uh, right. Uh, and that story is uh, Wings by Lee Sang. And Lee Sang is a very famous, uh, very famous writer here in Korea. There's a very prestigious literary award named after Lee Sang, the Lee Sang Literary Prize. One of the probably yeah, some, yeah. five most prestigious prizes. Okay. Yeah. And so I knew that I wasn't going to have time to read the whole collection. You can maybe see here, there's 25 books in the collection. So I was dipping in and out, and um, I, I knew I wouldn't have time to read them all before today's podcast. So I asked Charles, you know, which ones should I, I try to read, and he suggested this one, The Wings, number one in the Jim and Dang series, right? Number one, yeah. Yeah, I think it was the first Number one in the Jim and Dang series. Yeah. And I was excited to start reading it. Very famous writer, very famous story. And I didn't enjoy it at all. And I think I got a three or four <laughs> pages in and I sent Charles a message saying, what the hell? <laughs> I think you should, yeah, it's putting me to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I think I said it. Yeah, it's putting me to sleep. What's this one about? And yeah, so didn't enjoy, didn't enjoy uh, The Wings at all. And actually I gave up reading this collection and read something else instead. I should say, in yeah. defense of Isang, Isang was trying to do some very difficult things at some very difficult times. He was writing in the late 30s when it was impossible to write directly about colonization of Korea by Japan. So he was writing in a very impressionistic ways. Mm -hmm. He was also mm -hmm. attempting to emulate, he was one of uh, modern style, modern international style. He was one of the first Korean writers to do that. So he was attempting to emulate sort of 
mm, I would say French writing style oh, right, at that okay. time. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, who's the translator for this? So I've never heard of this translator before, but An Chung Hyo and James B. Lee. Yeah, I have never heard of those translators either. And yeah. some of, I have heard some complaints from some Koreans that the mm. translation does not make clear some of the relationships in that story. Okay. So okay. Lee Song is very important, and he was important because he was avant-garde. He was also a poet. If you like very, very experimental stories, The Wings is the story to go to. If you're into something more traditionally narrative, something clearer, uh, something a little less murky. And I have to admit that I had the mm. same problem the first time I read it. I was trying to, uh, I fought my way through what was going on. Yeah. Uh, at some other time in one of the 300 seconds uh, segments that I do for KTLIT.com, I will talk about this story because The Wings arguably contains the only Korean anti-hero that I've ever read of in Korean literature. But mm. with that said, with this one exception that Barry wasn't that fond of, and I admit I struggled my way through, and there are some other works in this collection that, you know, just aren't going to be your cup of tea or coffee. And I think I came to this just off the back of the Kim Young-ha and the Che In-ho. And Kim Young-ha and Che In-ho, these stories are much more traditional sort of narrative. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's yeah. And then fair to say. You move on to Yi Sang and say. it's more experimental and, and stranger. Yeah. So uh, when I gave up on Yi Sang, I started reading the Gong Ji Young book. Uh, Gong Ji Young's very famous here. She sold millions of books in Korea and this book, she's quite a controversial figure, right? She's quite a controversial She's very character. political. She's yeah. very political. And, and this, these, there's two stories in this collection. So there's Human Decency and there's Dreams. And they're both very similar in, term, uh, in terms of their theme. And they're both quite political. They both have female characters who were activists in the 80s. Okay, so they were sort of anti-government activists and right. they um, sort of joined protests against the government in the 1980s. But they're writing it's in the late 90s, I think both these stories are set, and you have these two characters and they're sort of looking back on the failures of the sort of 80s protest movement. And, and, and this was a, a mini genre. Mm. Uh, che, che Yun, for instance, wrote The Grey Snowman, a very similar story. There are a, a lot of stories at that time, mm -hmm. people were concerned with what had happened to those right, revolutionary yeah, yeah, ideals. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So you have some characters in this who, are, who were revolutionaries and they've uh, sort of they've betrayed their youthful I ideals and they've, you know, one of them's became like an owner of a bus company and uh, different things like this. But the two main characters, the two female protagonists in each story are kind of at points in their life where they're questioning their values and what happened to their values and, uh, you know, what point their life has now that they seem to have let these earlier youthful ideals kind of fall away from them. But I enjoyed it. I thought it was very interesting. And I, on the other hand, this we disagree. I did not enjoy this one this much because I found it kind of cliché. Mm. She's done better work since, and we'll, we'll, maybe we'll talk about her as an author okay. in a, f a future uh, vidcast. But I found her reflexive. Uh, you know, the the, bat, the evil Korean character does horrible things like goes to India to learn yoga yeah, and yes, eats that's spaghetti right, yeah. uh -huh, uh -huh. and is not Uri Nara. Yeah, now. she's international. Yeah, right. so. There's a contrast between that character, who's this sort of modern, globalized woman, and then this sort of protester who's just came out of jail after sp serving 20 years. With that said, um, Gung Ji Young is an expert at the symbol. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in describing that prisoner, yeah. I won't spoil anything, in describing that prisoner, Gung Ji Young gives that prisoner a couple of behaviors that oh, make yeah, you realize yeah. uh -huh, just uh -huh. how deeply yeah. being imprisoned can get into uh -huh. your head. Yeah, there's some nice touches like that, really yeah. great. So, at any rate, great collection. Ji Moon Dong LTI Korea collection of 25 works, uh, all available online. But probably, if you do discover you're interested in them, it's better for you to find a friend who can navigate a little Korean yep. and go to G Market or someplace mm -hmm, like that mm -hmm, and, and yeah, get them uh -huh. there. Yes, 24 maybe something. Moving along, let's talk about a massive success, an international massive yes. success. Uh -huh. And I think probably since you liked it more than I did, yep. you should start with the description. This is interesting. We have different tastes, right? Yeah. yeah okay. So this book is the Hen Who Dreamed She Could Fly, and it's by Hwang Son Mi. Very famous book here in Korea. It was pu first published just over 10 years ago, I think 11 years ago. It was an instant bestseller when it was released. And in the past 10 years, it's been in and out of the bestseller chart uh, several times. I think it sold over 2 million copies here in Korea. Uh, it was adapted into a musical, it was adapted into a play, and a comic, and in 
maybe uh, 2011 it was made into an animated film which became the most successful animated film in Korean history, in Korea. Uh, so more successful than any Pixar movie and the last year, last November, it was translated into English for the first time and it's been given quite a lot of promotion and a lot of international marketing by Penguin. Um, they see this, I think, as the next sort of crossover Korean book like Please Look After Mom. And this year, Hwang Song Mi will be the one of the guest offers, the offer of the day at the London Book Fair. And I think the film's going to be getting an international release maybe in the next couple of months in America and certainly back home in Britain in time for the London Book Fair as well. And it's comparable to many books. I think part of the reason I didn't like it is I'm not mm. a fan of children's books of that right. kind. Uh -huh. It's comparable to, to, to many books, although I've heard it compared to Lord of the Flies, which it really didn't. Oh, really? Where is that? I saw a couple of reviews. Oh, I would say uh, Animal Farm Animal Farm is closer. Oh, well, yeah, Animal Farm has the political subtext. Right, well, and yeah, the yeah. who's in and who's in. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. But uh, as I started to read, because I've read so much serious literature, when yeah. I started to read a children's book, I started to see, you know, basically to me it was the story of a manic depressive chicken. Uh, <laughs> in, an infertile <laughs> yeah. manic depressive chicken uh -huh. who wants to escape and finally achieves the death it wants. Right. Uh, in the midst of which we learn that interracial adoption may be fraught. Uh, uh -huh. It just it was... It, uh, and then it also, in a way, it like takes some of the themes of... You mentioned A Please Look After Mother. Mm. It throws in some of those cliché, you know, mother is the most sainted... Yeah, self-sacrificing sacrificing mother. And, yeah, that stuff's definitely there. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I think that my... You know, I, I, I really feel like a heel... <laughs> uh, coming out again and saying that I'm saying, I, I wouldn't read yeah. this book again, but I probably wouldn't read this book again just because it has so many, it, it, like children's books of every culture, it has so much built in that is just mm -hmm. cliche to mm -hmm. the culture. Mm -hmm. And of course this is because that's what children's books do. They are both reflections of and creators of culture. Yeah, exactly right. Okay. And so while I was interested in it as I went along, I really just saw some things in it because of my focus on adult literature that mm -hmm. certainly children would not see. And I would, it, you know, when Hwang Sin Mi came on, I think I actually, I asked a question at that meeting and I think I, uh, disturbed isn't the right word, I surprised her, I compared her to Yi Yol. <laughs> right. And politically, she and Yi Yol could probably not be, well, you could put Gong Ji Yong, who we discussed uh -huh, further. Yeah. Oh, okay, but, yeah, but yeah. It's that kind of story where it's, it can be read just as a story, you know, a story mm -hmm. of the victory of a, of a, yeah, chicken absolutely. who lives at the end of her life, you know. I yeah. mean, it's not when I say suicidal chicken, I don't mean like a chicken who's about to achieve whatever <laughs> yeah. chickens try to achieve. I mean a chicken who's <laughs> yeah. done laying uh -huh. eggs. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it, it, it can be read as a story of sacrifice. I mean, it can just be read as a story of this sort of family that's created through things that happen in the farmhouse. Yeah. And then it can be read as a larger fable of sacrifice and the importance of family mm -hmm. and continuity. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then again, as I said, you can just read it as the food chain's going to get everyone eventually, so run as long as you can, but you can't hide. <laughs> right, well, uh, I think, like you say, there are, there are some sort of cliched elements to it, but I just read it as a really great children's story, and I was genuinely touched and moved by it at the end. And I think if you just take it as this sort of, sort of fable about motherhood, it's actually uh, very interesting and very sweet and very endearing. However, having said that, I have spoken to several, several, several women who've totally disagreed and they really hate this idea of the, or that it presents as the, the mother as this sort of self sacrificing victim and when I heard that that made me sort of reevaluate it in a different way and I do like it I did like it a lot uh, it reminded me of Charlotte's Web and it has lots of There's things to say. There's another great comparison. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Charlotte's Web but it reminds me um, of that and it has a lot of things to say about you know bullying and uh, you know non-traditional family structures I guess you could say and um, the you know, mothers are wonderful people, right? So you, I don't you, think you, celebrating you, mothers is terrible. Um, you've talked, you've talked to me halfway back. On this, <laughs> right. right? Because it actually does throw a lot of things together. In yeah. terms of that non-traditional yeah. family, I wouldn't even just say family. Non-traditional society. There's a lot of elements yeah, that sure, function yeah. is trying to fit. 
So that, that special effect with all the swirliness and all of that, that was my opinion about this book slightly changing <laughs> because of what Barry said, because it is interesting to me that at the same time that Huang is doing all of these traditional mm -hmm. and cliche type things, she is actually taking a very wide range of out... I hadn't really thought of it this way. Most of the important characters are outsiders. Yeah, everybody, yes. All mm -hmm. of them are scuffling mm -hmm. for existence. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, maybe he's talked to me three quarters of the way back. Well, it's, and interesting, we, uh, someone asked uh, Huang Sun Mi if it was a, if it's a story about motherhood, uh -huh. didn't she? And she said it, she sort of uh, objected to the question a little bit and said people have projected that onto it, that it's so much about motherhood. Uh, you can understand why people think it's about motherhood, uh, but she sort of resisted that interpretation a little bit, didn't she? And in fact, when she spoke, she said it was a, a story based on her father's death, on that's his right, sacrifices. That's right, yeah, yeah. And that, the, that, that uh, Leafy or Sprout, depending mm, on the which, book or the film, yeah, the yeah, book uh -huh. film uh, represented that thing. So, there you mm -hmm. have it. For, those are our two topics. Uh, the Ji Dong series, which we strongly suggest if you're interested in Korean literature and starting with easy, small, accessible works, yeah. you look for. And we also strongly suggest you do that because they are slowly disappearing. Yes. So they will become uh -huh. yeah. unavailable at some point, even through the miracle of the internet. Uh, you have heard us talk about, I think, five books, three we agreed on and two we had some disagreement on. Yeah, uh-huh. So yeah. it covers a range. Uh, we talked about Huang Sun Min, Huang Sun Mi's uh, The Hen Who Dreamed She Could Fly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, as I said, I was partially talked back on board with that one. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> now it's recommendation time. What do you have? What, what, uh, what well, would you recommend? I've got Two recommendations. Oh, show off. Oh, really? Can I just do one? Oh, no, you can do two. Okay, yeah, he's two. always trying to outdo me. <laughs> well, uh, so, we've talked about Gong Ji Young today already, and so I want to recommend this book called Our, Our Happy Time by Gong Ji Young, uh, translated by Zora Kim Russell. I, I've heard she's a pretty good translator. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm only halfway through this book at the moment. Uh, it's been, it was made into a film here in Korea, I think, uh, a tear jerker film. I haven't had a chance to watch the film yet. But the book's very interesting and very dark and dealing with some very unpleasant subject matter. Uh, it sort of shows how a, a murderer and, and rapist on death row ended up like that because of the abuse that they'd experienced as a child. And there's another, the other main character is a former, I guess, K-pop star who has um, suffered a sort of a a series of mental breakdowns and is trying to kill herself a couple of times and it's about how those two characters come together but very interesting so far I'm enjoying it a great deal and certainly worth investigating and one more I'll do very quickly so why am I recommending this book by an American writer an American young adult writer uh, this is Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell yes that's her name Rainbow Rowell her parents must have been hippies born in California no <laughs> doubt Nebraska oh, oh goodness gracious <laughs> I never would have guessed <laughs> and uh, Park as you may have guessed is uh, the, a, a Korean character and this is a novel set in high school it's a sort of a romance novel a coming-of-age novel about these two characters but the interesting thing for us is that Park is a half Korean kid and it, and it says some interesting things about being a, a you know a Korean or a mixed-race child living somewhere else apart from your, your you know one of your parents native country and you know at one point one of his childhood friends says to him I thought I thought you were Mexican <laughs> and a very good book, so if you like young adult fiction, worth investigating. That may be the worst possible example of they all look alike I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> yeah. so I would like to recommend Paju Book City. Ah. Paju Book City is about a 45 minute bus ride from yep. Seoul. Mm -hmm. Right now there's no convenient way, unfortunately, to get there from Subway. And it's a city that was created by the government of Korea precisely to... Galvanize. Gal yeah, to yeah. sort of get a... a national literature thing going. It's really interesting to visit in a couple of ways and the main way, well, one of the things that interested me about it when I first heard about it was they said the books outnumber the people more than 20 to 1. <laughs> right. and I was like, yeah. that's my kind of place. <laughs> and then the second thing that interested me is there's, there are uh, two good used bookstores that have English books in them if you're interested in that, if you live in Korea as I do. And then there's also art galleries, uh, it's been beautifully sort of sculpted and mm. architected and laid out. 
it also has the uh, Gigi, Hang, Gigi Yang guest house, the only hotel in Paju, and consequently quite expensive. Yes, uh -huh. Very so, cool. yeah. But as a day trip, Paju Book City Eve is just an amazing place to go. Last thing to say about that, however, go on a weekday. It is a business city, and it does tend to close down on weekends. So my recommendation, Paju Book City, outside of Seoul. Your recommendations, oh, Eleanor and Park. Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell, and Our Happy Time by Gong Ji Young. So we'd like to say goodbye uh, for this week, for this month's vidcast uh -huh. that we probably will have a name for by next month. Yes, uh -huh. we might have some exciting news about a sponsor next time. We hope so. Mm -hmm, yeah. Thank you for watching. See you in a month. Bye bye. Awesome. Hey, that was fun. <laughs>